and let's give the Lord Jesus a wonderful round of applause. Is everything all right, my friends? It's so good that we are all here in the house of God. It's too bad I cannot hear from the, from the people who are watching on TV telling us that everything is all right. But we're going to have a great meeting. I'm absolutely sure that the Lord's going to enlighten your heart. During our last meeting, I spoke about a verse, but the subject's so long that I have to go back to give you a few examples that when God opens the womb, he causes delivery. So in a little while, I'm going to talk about this. It'll be good. Now I'd like to see the testimony of a person who was healed in the name of Jesus. What's your name? My name is Pedro. What happened? I had a heel spur. It had been bothering me for four or five months already. How did you used to walk with this heel spur? I went spur? to the doctor, but it didn't help. How were you walking before, I was walking Pedro? like this, sort of sideways, because it was hurting a lot. How about I couldn't now? I put my weight on it. Now I'm starting to, I'm playing soccer already. Go ahead and run now, Pedro, run. Wow, he's really going at it, folks. <laughs> Pedro's become an athlete, folks. Glory to God. Amen. Let's give Jesus a big hand now, folks. Look, the same thing that happened to Pedro in this here church can happen to you too. The Lord is always here. He does not change. He's still the same. And when we do understand his word, he starts to move and he acts. And when the Lord acts, who is it that's going to try and reverse it? It's a done deal. And if anyone does try, they will surely fail because he's the Lord Almighty God. God doesn't have any difficulty whatsoever. The Lord is everywhere. He has all the power. We are just a little tiny sample of everything he's done. He's created the heavens and the earth, all of this vastness, and he's made you and me, except that we are created, were created in his image and in his likeness. So that, my dear brothers, if we're connected to the Lord God, we can be absolutely sure, even if the enemy says whatever he wants to say, the word of the Lord God shall stand forever. Let us now see a person who was healed. Play this other testimony, will you? Asenjina, what used to be your problem? I had a problem with my knees. You even have a, uh, you have them wrapped up in something, in an elastic brand or something. That's right. Why were you wearing that? Because it hurt. It hurt. And how did you used to walk with this problem in your knees? I used to limp. Show us how it was. I want to see. Show us, Asenjina. I used to walk like this. Walk look. properly now, Asenjina. Now look. Oh, glory to God. <laughs> Let us give the Lord Jesus a big hand, right, folks? Glory to God for that. Look, open your Bible up to Psalm 33, because there's a message there that I want to study, and it's a very powerful word. The psalm was written under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, just like the entire Bible was, so this is a good word. We're going to read verse 11. My friends, in Psalm 33, verse 11, the following is written. The counsel of the Lord stands forever. Let us stop here for a minute. So that whatever the Lord, whatever he has decided regarding my life, regarding your life, stands forever. Even if you have not taken hold of it, you have simply failed to enjoy, to enjoy the goodness of all of the Lord, whatever he has planned, so that it would, would come to pass in your life, so that you'd become, you'd, you'd be able to fully enjoy the blessing of God. But if you make up your mind now, and say, Father, forgive me. Today I'm going to take hold of the things you've said in my heart about me. God's not evil to say, now it's too late, you're lost. No, no, no. The word stands. The door's still open. You only need to repent and talk to him, and he'll come and bless you. Try to remember some instance in the faith show, in this church or at any other church, when the word of the Lord God was preached, and you were able to understand the promise. This counsel will never, will never, ever be removed from before the Lord God, nor the door be shut in your face. It stands forever. And it goes on to say this, the plans of his heart to all generations. We are not any better than any of the previous generations. And we are not any better than the generations that are to come. All of us are the same. Since man has a habit of changing things, the clothing style changes, even, even the way we talk changes. The words change and, they all, and the new words appear. Each generation thinks they are better than the ones before, but they're all the same. And, and the plans of the Lord's God's heart are always the same for every generation. God is not going to change. The Lord wants the people, whoever they might be, whatever their origin, the, the people, their skin color doesn't matter, their stature doesn't matter, nor their physical complexion. All of these people, he wants all of them to understand what his will is and that they enjoy this will. 
because he's a father. He does not want to see us get lost. And he does not want us to be attacked by the enemy as we so often are. But if we are not under the Lord God's protection, then there will be no escape. But my dear brother, the Lord's counsels, whatever he's decided and spoken about you, is available for you now. Amen? When the person truly believes, the counsel of the Lord stands. There is no way that the devil can keep the person from being blessed. The problem is that some people are shy and they don't use the faith that God has given them. Dr. Schweides, I don't have enough faith for that. But no one has enough faith for that. Faith comes by hearing the word of the Lord God. We have got to be trained so that when the word is revealed to us, we need to believe it. Then we will be able to, to hear the voice of the Lord, to hear what God is saying. But it's not just about hearing with our ears. When we get that revelation, that assurance, we take possession of it. Then the Lord works. This meeting will be a big failure. The Lord does not work here. We want to see God work wonders, and the Lord God wants to do just that. During our last meeting, I was talking about Isaiah 66, verse number 9. And I'm going to take it up again because I couldn't finish it the last time since this message is so long, e even though it appears, it appears to be short. It is the very beginning of an understanding that has been expanding so that we may extract from it what God has for us. This is what is written, the Lord God saying, Shall I bring to the time of birth and not cause delivery, says the Lord. We will continue later. So when there's a lady who is barren, who cannot bear children, when she's blessed and God opens up her womb, of course she is not pregnant yet. God has opened it by faith when she felt it from the Lord God. That is when the work is done. You feel it from God, you take hold of it, the work's already done. Now, you have to wait for the natural process. Conception has to take place and the things that, that have to happen for the child to be developed. When the Lord gives a revelation, it doesn't matter. Whatever he has said regarding you, believe it, because the Lord wouldn't open the womb and not cause delivery. He opens it and he begets. He completes the work. King David is a very good example. He was a youth. A young lad. And the Lord, in his wisdom, said to the prophet Samuel, I want you to go to Jesse's house, who was King David's father, and anoint one of his sons, whom God was going to show him. Samuel obeyed God's instruction the same, the very same day, but he wasn't perfectly attuned to the Lord. Even the great men of God at times aren't fully attuned. And Samuel arrived at Jesse's house, and Jesse was caught by surprise. What's happened, Jesse? I came here to bring a blessing. The Lord told me to anoint one of your sons as king over Israel. Jesse rejoiced with the news. And Samuel asked, Where are your sons? So Jesse made them all come in. From the oldest, the first male born to Jesse, who was his firstborn and heir to the blessing, and so on until almost the youngest. When the first son came in, Samuel was not really in the presence of the Lord. He saw the young man, a handsome tall man. He had all of those those attributes that men usually think a great person should have, but it doesn't matter if the person is tall or short, it's the heart that counts. And Samuel looked at him and said, Surely the Lord's anointed here, before him, the one he's chosen. So the Lord God rebuked the prophet Samuel. Samuel, I do not see the same way man sees. You are, you are using your natural eyes. So Samuel felt kind of embarrassed. It's not this one. Do you have another? Yes. Then came the second, and then the third, the fourth, the fifth, the sixth, the seventh. And that was it. But Samuel didn't feel God's prompting. Hey, Jesse, don't you have any more sons? Well, I do have the youngest. He's over in the fields keeping the sheep. Send him, bring him here. There was no way David could be king, folks, that he, he, he could be the recipient of that blessing because he was the eighth and they followed the law. If the first one died, he was replaced by the second, the third, the fourth, until the seventh, seventh sons had to die. And... There was practically no way at all that David would ever be king. Then they brought in David. When he came, God told Samuel, this is one. So he anointed David. But the matter would have to remain secret because Saul was the king and he could have killed David. So the Lord opened up the womb. The Lord gave the blessing. But it took several years for David, for David to take over the kingdom. And then there was a time when the plan of the Lord appeared to have totally failed. King Saul, being envious of David, since he was a warrior and, and he knew he knew how to prepare himself for the mission that God was going to give him, King Saul began to pursue David so he could kill David. 
David, along with a group of 400 men who were with him, Saul went out with 3,000 of the best soldiers he had. The commander of his army, there was there too, Abner, and all those soldiers were there with, with King Saul. Searching for David, there wasn't one square inch of the land of Israel where they didn't, didn't look for him. And David was in a very difficult situation. On two separate occasions, he could have done something about that. Might have caused him to, to perhaps through the act, he might have lost the blessing of God. One day, he was hiding in a cave with all of his men. Everything was dark. King Saul had an intestinal problem. He went in there to relieve himself. While King Saul was squatting, David came and cut off the corner of his robe. He could have killed Saul. A little bit later, David showed what he had done. He had spared Saul's life, but Saul continued to pursue him. One day, while King Saul was chasing David, when he was just about to find him, he felt extremely drowsy. It was nighttime. He lay down to sleep with his spear and his water jug by his side, and all his soldiers were standing watch. But all the soldiers fell asleep. And David, who was not fearful, he was audacious. He walked in among all of the soldiers, as quiet as a church mouse. And he took Saul's spear. It would have been so easy to kill him there. He took the water jug, then went over to the other side and called out, Saul! The soldiers woke up in desperation. I only didn't kill you because I didn't want to. David could not rush all of the election of Damad. Like I said, there are a lot of lessons here. The Lord God had opened the womb and David was going to be king for sure. The Lord God would not give you a promise and then not fulfill it. Not bring it to pass and not do what he said. If he said it, you need to be secure. Take hold of that. I know my turn is going to come. And even having to go through these trials, he had to go to a foreign country. And when he got there, David started to, to in order to avoid any problems because the people there were, were envious of him, he pretended he was crazy. He let his saliva run down his beard. He started talking crazy and bashing his head. And then the king said, who is this crazy guy? What's this madman doing here? Send this madman away. He did all this so he could save himself, a man who had an anointing. And one day the anointing came when all of Israel came together, the captains from all Israel, they came to Hebron to pledge their allegiance to King David. Saul had already died, but Saul's family wanted to take over the kingdom. David was only reigning in Hebron so far, and they all came to Hebron, bowed down and said, we are your soldiers now, and they anointed David king. The very moment they did that, all the Philistines rose up together and came against David. They were mischievous. David had just been anointed king, and there came that great multitude. And what did David do? He rose up to go against them. Lord God, should I go now? Yes. Will you give them into my hands? Yes. David decided to go, and the battle was atrocious. He came out of it without a scratch. The Philistines, many of them were destroyed. Others ran away, and they left their own gods over there. Idols. Idols made of gold, so David could covet them and take them and be cursed by them. So David then said, take all of these idols and burn them. We don't want any of these things. Our God's not made of gold. And they destroyed all of the idols. These are all the lessons for us, but time's too short for us to go into all of them. But the Lord is mighty to reveal them to you. Sometime later, the Philistines gather and came against them again. David had already received God's permission, but he asked the Lord again, shall I go? God said, it's going to be different. You are going to do this. You're going to circle around behind them and you're going to be very quiet. As soon as you hear the sound of a marching army, up above the tops of all of the mulberry trees, this was the Lord's army that was there, and you can now attack now if you want. David stayed there and he was waiting. We do not know how long, minutes, hours, but all of a sudden, they heard it. This is it, folks, and they won. If David had rushed things, he could never have lost the Lord's blessing. So the Lord is telling us this, don't ever confess defeat. It took several years, but David didn't say, but God, what kind of king have you turned me into? Why have you anointed me? If now I'm constantly being chased like a criminal by the hands of this scoundrel who has despised you. No, no, David did not attempt to do anything against Saul. He always respected because Saul was the Lord God's anointed. The Lord knows how to get things done. Dr. Suarez, but I have suffered a lot. You have no idea what's been going against me. Have you been called by the Lord God to fulfill some kind of mission? Stand firm. Do not rush things. Do not act like those who belong to the world and wait 
because the Lord is going to work righteousness in your life. But time is passing by, Dr. Schweitzer. So what if it's time's passing by? The Lord knows everything. His precision watch is never even a fraction of a second slower, a fraction of a second fast. At exactly the right moment, David was there. He had been anointed. The seed was there. He had been anointed king by Samuel. That was the actual truth. The man had that anointing given by God resting upon him. He hadn't asked for it, nor asked for votes, nor forced it. The father had not tried to bribe people. Look for my votes. No, no. God's the one who decided. And God would surely give him what he had promised. My dear brother, take it. My dear sister, take what the Lord has already said, because the counsel of the Lord stands forever. He never changes whatever the Lord God has said, and you have either wasted it or it's not been fulfilled yet. Wait for it. If you have wasted it, ask for forgiveness. God, I take hold of it. The Bible says that a wise man knows the proper time and procedure for every matter. It's not according to man's. It's according to what God says. But I was humiliated, Dr. Swadis. You know, I have been subject to so much humiliation that nobody... Only those with ice water in their veins would endure that. No, you have the blood of Jesus Christ. Your glory will be great. Just stand firm. Don't let yourself be overcome by an evil. At the proper time, the people came and he started reigning. David reigned in Hebron for seven years after Saul had died. That area had already been delivered, but the whole nation had not. And what did he do? He waited. All of a sudden, they all came, the commanders with all of the soldiers, and they told David, Where are your servants? You shall reign over us. Then it was fulfilled. David started reigning without having to lift his hand or shed any blood at all from, from, um, from, from the Israelites because God was with him and he gave David the victory. Take hold of God's blessing. Shall I bring to the time of birth and not cause delivery? Will God ever lie or deceive anyone? No, says the Lord. Shall I, who cause delivery, shut up the womb, says your God? What is this? If he's given you a blessing, will he stop at it now and shut up the womb? No, my brother. If you have a gift, the miracle God has performed is a cycle. It's the beginning of a cycle of a cycle that shall never have an end. You only ever need to remain faithful to God. The Lord God is never, ever going to change the thoughts that he has regarding you. But Dr. Schwartz, it seems, it seems, but it's not. This is a vermissilitude. It's not true. It seems to be, but it's not. Stand firm and you will certainly be victorious. I want to say a prayer for those who are sick in our midst with any health problem, but the first and foremost, for those who have problems in their hands, all the way from the wrist to the fingertips. Dr. Schwartz, it's difficult to close it. When I close it, one of my fingers doesn't open anymore, then, then I need to push it so very hard. It's really been tough. Or any other problem, it may be in the arms or legs, but I want to focus because recently God's been really using me to heal hands, and I already know this, um, this kind of anointing. When it starts, I know that he will do some mighty things. If you need my prayer of faith right now for any problem, stand to your feet, please, in the name of Jesus. Those who have faith are already standing, right? Those who linger two minutes don't have any faith. Then it's better not to stand because you're not going to receive. You who are watching us do the same thing. Stand to your feet right now and then listen. Whatever part of your body it might be, look at me now. You're not going to let the devil keep your mouth shut. If you're healed, you should testify so the devil may be put to shame and you will be healed. God wouldn't open the womb and not cause to deliver. Close your eyes. Father, Thank you for this very special moment, in of which now the womb being open, you will certainly cause to deliver. Lord God, your counsel stands forever and ever. I now pray all for this person who is, O oh Lord, beseeching you for your grace, asking for your tender mercies. Father, I neutralize every work of the devil in their lives right now. And Lord, I command you, spirit of sickness that has crippled this hand. It's left a sequela. It was caused by an accident, by a, by a fall. It was caused by a sickness, whatever it might have been, rheumatitis, tendonitis, bursitis, nephritis, whatever the name may be, you're going to come out now. I command, demon, 
come out of the arm, of the leg, of the back, of the head, of the eye, of the ear, of any part of the body, in the name of Jesus, and you say, Amen. Look at Dr. Suarez now. Don't sit down yet because God's going to start working now. Now, who knows? It may be a kidney problem or something like that. Dr. Schrades, I couldn't open and close my hand before. Now it's opening and closing. Do this with your hand to see if it's all right. Look, my hand has been healed. Who has had their hands healed here in the name of Jesus? I've seen this happen in every meeting. You, raise your hand because I want to give glory to God with you in the name of Jesus. Back there, what's happened, my friend? Uh, Dr. Suarez, my foot has been hurting for the last two weeks. And now for the glory of God, it's fine. Glory to God, in the name of Jesus. You, ma'am, what's happened? Uh, I've had several surgeries, and today, for over 20 days, I have been feeling a pain in my leg. Down here in the femur, down by the groins, and now on my way to church, I was limping, and now I felt that it started to burn. And now I'm not feeling that pain anymore. And are you in going Jesus to go home name. limping or not? I'm going to go home in perfect shape by the power of the blood of Jesus. Amen. Glory to God. That's how we should talk. Who else has received some kind of blessing? Now my neck feels loose. The back pain has disappeared. I was in terrible pain, Dr. Suarez. It was really hurting. And now it's all gone. Raise your hand in the name of Jesus. You, sister. When I was coming to church, my back was hurting a lot, and I said, in Jesus' name, I'm Are going you feeling and I will well see now? my healing. For the glory of God. What's happened to you, my friend? I was feeling a lot of pain in my arms, and now, at this moment, it's gone. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. And you, my friend. Dr. Suarez, I failed to come here for two weeks, and I was feeling very severe pain. And I was feeling hopeful today. And thank God my back's not hurting anymore. Oh, glory to God. That's great. And you, my friend? I was feeling a lot of anguish. I, I was feeling very sad. And now with the prayer, I feel much better. Oh, much glory better. to God. Amen. Who else in the name of Jesus, folks? Dr. Suarez, the pain's gone here. How about you, sister? Dr. Suarez, I was in pain when I got here. A lot of pain. I went to the nurse's office. Sister Vanya and Sister Rosangela prayed for me. I felt like there was a big wire getting into my bone. I even have a plaster here. It felt like it was kind of going into my bone. Mm -hmm. And through the prayer, I was delivered because it felt like someone pulled oh, something that God. was like a root. How like wonderful. Someone pulled out some Stand sort of firm. Root. The Lord is working. How about you, sister? I've had a truly awful pain around here in my hip bones. Whenever I walked, I'd get really tired, really, really tired. And now after the prayer, look, I'm fine. You're free now. Amen. Glory Amen. to God. What's your name? Antonia. What has God done, Antonia? I had a headache when I got is here. everything gone everything now? Everything is gone. Thanks be to God. If you've been healed, we're out of time for testimonies now. If you were not, you were not. Speak only the truth. If you've been healed, raise your hand and say, Jesus, thank you. You may be seated now and let's watch the real life drama, shall we? Thirty-two million Brazilians, 18 years of age and over, suffer from morbid obesity. According to the Brazilian Society of Bariatric and Metabolic Surgery, the number of surgeries has increased almost 90% over the last five years, reaching 72,000 in 2012. In Jose Lee's case, the back pain lingered as a sequela. Listen to this. It's been almost four years since I've had the surgery. My weight used to be an alarming 253 pounds. The pain I experienced was around this part here, except that I was constantly in pain. I didn't, I never had any relief. It would hurt when I washed the dishes. Um, it hurt when I, I cleaned the floors, it would hurt a lot. Whenever I sat somewhere hard, I would discreetly have to put these two hands right here, look. I would have to stay like this all the time with my hands behind me so I could sit straight and try to ease the pain. Every time she went to sleep, she'd lie down and put her hands under her back like this. At the class that I'm taking, a computer class, there's a therapist that was helping me. She was helping me massaging my back. It eased the pain, but then it would come back. Jose Lee had another problem. She was a beauty products reseller, but her business wasn't doing well. She wasn't selling much, you know. Then I felt God touching my heart to advise my wife to start sponsoring the program, right? And she would say, how can I be a sponsor if I have no money? The Lord said that he gives seeds to those who sow, right? So if you really want to sponsor out of love, God's going to make a way, right? 
Jose Lee and her husband attended one of Dr. Suarez's meetings on April 24, 2015 in Curitiba. Before we got there, I thought, I guess the Lord must want to perform a miracle in my husband's life because he is so eager to go. But I didn't know that the Lord had already prepared something for me. He had a miracle for my life. So when we got to the meeting, the Lord blessed me with my healing. How about you, sister? When I got here, my back was hurting a lot because I have a back condition. Some days I walk stooped down like this. Some days when I get to my computer class, I sit on a chair and bend forward. I'm taking in computer, computer classes. Computer classes? Yes. So when I started the classes, my, my teacher would say, Rosalie, you have to... Put your chair very close to the computer, otherwise you're not going to make it. After you prayed, I felt something in my back go numb, and I believe I was healed. The pain disappeared. It disappeared, and I was able to bend down again. You, you couldn't Suarez. bend down anymore. No. So bend down to show us now. Oh, glory to God. <laughs> That's so great. That's great. Look at her smile now. Your blessing's been confirmed. You may go in the name of Jesus. I wash the dishes normally now. I can stand at my sink. I can wash the windows. I can climb a ladder. And I also, I really like painting the house, you know. I love to work with painting, so now I'm fulfilled. The Lord's care is manifested once again, and Rosalie finally manages to fulfill her calling as a sponsor. I said, like in a playful manner, you know, joking, only if this Holy Spirit himself came down to pay my debt, because I came here to pay what I owe. Then I saved, and I was able to become a sponsor. After I started to sponsor, my sales, they increased. As soon as I arrive at my class, a lot of people are already there in the classrooms. They come to me. Then I give them the magazine to all of the ladies. And they place their orders right then and there with me. And now every, every time I arrive there, it's as if God had prepared a point of sale for me there in that place, you know? There are more people placing orders now. I started working in the sales with her and our business has, it has improved a lot. So we see that it's the hand of God helping us to make our business prosper. I thank the Lord for everything, for the healing, for having opened the doors and prospered my sales. Glory to God, folks. Well, let me say the prayer now in the name of Jesus. Let us all stand, folks. If you're watching us at home, do the same thing. Bow your heads and close your eyes. Father, first, I want to bless those who are at home. And I determine their complete deliverance. All of the annihilation of every evil work. And I command every single demon come out of the lives of these people who are watching me anywhere in the name of Jesus Christ.